Hello everyone and welcome back to our Color Pie Philosophy series. In these videos we dive deep into the psychology and philosophy of the Magic the Gathering color wheel. We've already done a video on the individual colors of the color pie as well as a few of the two color pairs. If you want to check out these videos we have some suggestions up on the screen and the entire playlist is available in the description box. If you enjoy these videos and want more of them like this be sure to hit that like button. Now without further ado it's time to talk white green Selesnia. The White Green Guild, known as the Selesnia Conclave, is the named and supported representation of the White Green color pair. Selesnia is known for its dedication to community, peace, and harmony, but as we're about to show you, there's a lot more to this color pair than meets the eye. So throw all your preconceived notions out the door, because the Selesnia will absolutely surprise you in ways you probably don't expect. Now for us to truly understand the guild, we have to explore its foundation. We have to dive into the core of white and green that fuels the relationship. We'll begin with white. We have a lot of work to do. White as a color brings a lot to the table, but to Selesnya specifically, we're going to focus on white's desire to protect the whole. White wants its citizens to survive. Whoever counts on white to protect them, that's who white wants to protect. It's white's sworn duty to protect whoever needs protecting. That is the color's fundamental truth. Which means that white is going to do whatever it takes to keep everyone alive. Sometimes that means building a giant wall or enacting oppressive laws. It doesn't matter. White's number one priority is the protection and survival of its people. And to achieve this ultimate protection, White teaches its citizens that acting as part of the group is the only way to survive, thrive, and be happy. Now from this train of thought, you also get the idea that the individual is less important than the whole. White is too concerned with the well-being of the masses to give two craps about an individual, at least when it comes to the well-being of its people at large. One for all should be the color's motto, to be completely honest. And while there are instances where white props up the individual, those are outlying cases. The color's purpose is widespread protection. The color's purpose is peace, life over death, satisfaction over hunger, group stability over individual prowess. Now green is an often misunderstood and complex color, but in this particular instance, green is moved by its most primal desire, acceptance. At the very foundation of what green is, is a strong need for nature to grow unencumbered, unrestrained, unbridled. More than anything else, green hates interference in the natural order. When said natural order is under attack or natural growth is being threatened, green wastes no time lashing out in self-defense. Everything green does is in service of this larger goal of not only accepting the world as it is, but embracing the world as it is. The color is certainly fanatical, but it's fanatical about nature. And this deep, primal need for acceptance fosters green's desire to protect itself and protect whatever is natural in the world. From forests, to humans simply living their lives, to animals, whatever helps promote growth in every sense of the word, green is there. And that's our way in. That's the true foundation of what Selesnia is. If the Selesnia Conclave can be summed up in one word, that one word is community. White seeks to foster growth and prosperity for its people by protecting them from outside threats and basically telling them what to do. White knows best what white's people need. Green seeks to foster growth and prosperity by letting everything run wild. To this end, both white and green are defensive in nature. They both want to protect what's theirs, and while the motivations behind that are fundamentally different, remember white wants to protect its people from everything, and green wants to stop outside intrusion of any kind regardless of whether it's good or bad, they both come together in support of protection as a primary goal. And because of this, it's arguable that green and white are the closest allied color pair there is. Let me explain. In this series, we've already looked at the Black Red Rakdos and Blue White Azorius allied color pairs, and while both of those guilds are built on structural similarities, neither of them even come close to the sheer depth of similarities that white and green share. Both colors value community above everything else. Both colors believe that protecting the whole is more important than protecting the individual, and both colors believe in the concept that the group is only as strong as its weakest link. These are similarities so fundamental in nature that the lines between white and green start to blur a little bit the more you bring them together. I can't stress enough how deeply connected these two colors are when it comes to community and group value. Now that we understand the basic connection between white and green, I bet it's pretty easy to guess what the Selesnia Guild hates, right? Yeah, hates black. Hates black so much, it's unreal. I can't think of something that white green hates more than black, I'm not even joking. And for the record, the feeling is mutual. Black hates both of them too. Why don't they get along? Because black is literally dedicated to itself. That's all it cares about, the individual. There isn't a single thing in the world more sickening to a community-based guild than individualism. Not only do the Selesnia hate black, they view the color as being weak based on its individually focused mandate. 
Selesnya thinks the color is stupid. The white and green motivations in the guild feed off of each other so much that the color black is just an abomination. Can't wait for the Obzan episode of this series, that's going to be exciting, but you get what I mean. When white and green are together without any other color influence, yeah, they hate black a lot. The Selesnya are powerful, and the color pair has created some intensely popular and strong cards throughout Magic's history, and that's no mistake. White green's strength lies in its ability to protect itself and prop itself up. Remember, we're talking about the community guild here. It shouldn't surprise you to see cards like Collective Blessing, Dawnless Escort, Mirari's Wake, and Privileged Position. With all this protection, it's only natural that White Green has a heavy focus on creature creation. The ever popular populate mechanic is quintessential Selesnya. Make tokens, multiply them, the more the merrier, let everything grow just as it should. From sorceries to legendary creatures to tutors and more, the Selesnya don't shy away from creature creation, that's for sure. Now besides mass protection and mass production, White Green does one more very important thing quite well. It hates everything that isn't itself. Take Green's disdain for unnatural artifacts and add White's intense paranoia and overprotectiveness. When you combine these two strong fanaticisms, you get things like Gaddick Teague, who is a total jerk, or a Fracturing Gust, supremely over the top. Even something like Glare of Subdual or even Oversoul of Dusk. It's quite clear that Selesnya hates everything that isn't Selesnya. For a color pair that wants to promote peace, it sure has no problem going over the top to secure it. While the Selesnya can't be quite formidable, it doesn't mean the color pair is without weakness. Unfortunately, white and green together have a few pretty glaring weaknesses. The first and biggest weakness? No desire for individual greatness. This is of course by choice, but that doesn't mean the guild gets to be free of the consequences. Individual achievement and prowess is something very important to most of the other guilds and to the other colors as well. In the world of Magic the Gathering, individual strength shines brightly on outrageous and powerful creatures. And sure, the white-green color pair does bring a few beefy creatures of its own, but it's nothing compared to the pushed, powerful, risky, dynamic design that the other colors bring to the table. In this specific instance, Mark Rosewater said it best when he said that one of Selesnya's weaknesses is their inability to innovate. He couldn't have been more right. Because the guild doesn't push the boundaries, it doesn't reap the rewards of individual prowess, and at the end of the day, when you're trying desperately to bring literally everyone with you, you're going to lag behind, and in Magic, that lag is pretty evident. Up to this point, the relationship between white and green has pretty much been a bunch of rainbows and unicorns and butterflies, right? Everything seems so great and awesome and amazing. And to be honest, for the most part, it's basically like that. But that doesn't mean there isn't some friction. On a surface level, white and green get along like a house on fire, but just hope they don't talk about their fundamental motivations because like we touched on before, they're motivated by very different things. White is a color of restraint, a color of intellect, believe it or not. White understands the value in planning, strategic movement. The color understands that it has to make calculated decisions to thrive. This is one of the many reasons that most armies in magic tend to be white. Follow orders from the top because the top knows what it's doing. On the other hand, green? Green couldn't care less about strategy. It couldn't care less about planning. It couldn't care less about restraint. There's very little subtlety or even forethought when green feels like it needs to act. If natural growth is threatened, green doesn't hesitate for a second. Fight first, fight later, never ask questions. Questions aren't natural. It sounds almost red to be honest, but that's for another video. Green isn't as hot-headed as red, but it's just as quick to act defensively, almost out of instinct. And right there, that's the thread we have to pull on to see where the guild separates, the chink in the armor, so to speak. White and green can't get on the same page in regards to reactionary measures. They just can't. White will always want to create a battle plan that ensures the greatest chance of success with the least casualties. Green doesn't have time to think about that because it already sent a Jumanji-like onslaught at the enemy. White can't understand why green won't just calm down for a second and be less reckless, and green can't understand why white would wait even a fraction of a second without proactively defending itself. Now, it's not the most dramatic break between guild colors, but I did tell you they were very close allies. I wasn't joking. The white-green Selesnya represent community in Magic the Gathering. If you want to go wide strategy or a color pair that guarantees you solid protection for your cards, white-green is the way to go. The entire pair is devoted to the protection of its inhabitants, and no matter what white-green deck you run, I'm sure you'll find some type of protection or mass support in there somewhere. They just can't help themselves, to be honest. This is simply what you get when you mix white's desire for peace and order with green's desire for interdependence and natural growth. The best babysitter ever goes to Lesnia.
So what do you think about the White Green Selesnia? Different than what you thought? Exactly the same? I'd love to hear your thoughts about the guild. I know there are a lot of Selesnia fans out there. Also, be sure to let me know which guild you want showcase next. We're halfway through the 10 Ravnica guilds, so if someone comments your favorite guild, be sure to thumbs it up and reply to their comment with words of support. It'll help me decide which direction to go in next. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. The Selesnia feel like the perfect family. You know what families like to do? They like to open Modern Masters 2017, strong segue wedge, as always. Anywho, if you want to order a box of the newest, most insane set ever, you can right now for $200 each, ship right to your door. All you have to do is click the link on your screen. Great price helps the channel. You'll obviously open a voice of resurgence thanks to this video. Obviously, it'll be great. <laughs> Enjoy.